Hi, I'm Analytical, the coding queen, and today we will be building a very opulent website. It is another great beginner project if you're pretty new to HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and even if you haven't seen any of those before, it should be pretty easy for you to follow along. At any point if you get lost, just head to the description, and I've included a few of my previous videos that will get you up to speed. As always, be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell. And if you have any specific questions, just drop them in the comments section and I will reply to you as soon as I can. Now, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines and let's code! This is the website we're going to be building today. It's so silly, so fun. When we click on Scarlet, Uplands, you own everything. We got Mercedes and Khan and just popping around the screen. Shouting out Appalens, you own everything. And we also have a rotating set of background images, just for fun. I've gone ahead and dealt with all of the photo editing, so you can just take the images and use them however you want. I also have the sound clip. So like all of our coding projects, we're going to start by opening our text editor. So we're using Sublime for this. Save this as index.html. And to generate all the basic HTML, we do the opening bracket and HTML. The first thing we'll want to do is just put the images on the page. It's easy, so we can kind of see what we're working with. If we want to open this in our browser, we just drag in the index.html, and we see we've got Scarlet Huge and Kahana and Mercedes just as big. Let's just focus on Scarlet's image for now. And instead of having to delete this and retype it, we can comment it out. So I'm going to do Command and then slash. This comments out the line. So it's still there, but it's not executing. So this is a great way to maybe leave a note so you can self-document your code. I'll also create a CSS file. So we're going to link that in. We're going to do style.css. I'll throw a class on here called Scarlet. That way we'll be able to modify each image separately. So dot Scarlet to edit the class. And let's just make the width 70%. Be sure to save both files. Change it to like 45. Now that should fit on a screen pretty well. We want to position Scarlet all the way at the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So we could say like margin left 55%, margin up 10%. That gets Scarlet in the right direction, but when we resize the window, she doesn't stay there. Now right now Scarlet is being positioned relative to the screen, but if we want to always have Scarlet in one place on the screen, similar to if you're on a website and they've got a menu that's always at the top of the page, no matter how far you scroll down, you can set position to absolute and it will remain wherever you place it inside of the screen. And then if I set the distance to the bottom to zero and to the right to zero and save, then it's always going to stay in the bottom right hand side of the screen. Some people say CSS is like black magic and I have to agree. There are so many properties you can learn and so many different ways to use them together to create websites. And I know it can be a little daunting at first, but the best way to get better at it is just to practice and follow along with my videos and see the properties I'm using. And when I was building this originally, I looked up how to do most of this. So don't feel like I'm some kind of super genius mastermind. I'm just really good at Googling. <laughs> Now we've got Scarlet exactly where we want her, so let's focus on our dancing queens. Let's give them a class called Dancers. So we, we want to position these absolutely as well. We want them to start it on the top right corner, then we'll animate them along the way. I'll just copy this over from here. Instead of bottom, we'll do top. And let's also, I guess, set the width. Now everyone is in their places! <laughs> on your mark, get set. Apple so far with CSS, we've seen how to style elements on the page where they stay the same and change when you hover over them or click on them. You can also create really cool animations with it. So I'm just going to go to the W3 Schools. So here you can see they've got the box of CSS just bouncing around the screen back and forth. And CSS animations work with keyframes. You'll set specific points along an animation and set what the animation should look like 10% in, 20% in, 50% in, and CSS will figure out what happens in between those keyframes that you've set. I'm just going to pull in this animation. To define an animation, you'll type at keyframes and then the name of the animation. Let's just call this dancing. And to include the animation in the class you want to animate, type animation name. And this will be the same as what you had below. And then you can set an animation duration. We'll just copy what they did of four seconds. Refresh the page. So now we can see we've animated the background color from red to yellow. But we could also flip from top to bottom. 
And we're only gonna modify the top here. We're not, rather than just setting bottom to zero here, you need to make sure you're setting the beginning value and the end value for all of the parts of the animation. Instead of doing from to two, we could do 30% to uh, 60%. And now when we refresh, we see it. there's a bit of a pause, then it goes quickly down to the bottom, and then it slides back up to the initial position that's set. I think we should start by having them slide in from the right. So we actually want to start with them hidden off screen. So let's set right to negative 250 pixels and see if that gets them off. So now they're gone. And at 10%, let's set right to zero. I'm going to comment out the rest of this so we can focus on everything one step at a time. And just like commenting in HTML, you do command and slash. The comments look a little bit different here, but you don't have to worry about that. Just let your text editor handle all the commenting for you. And you can uncomment with the same command. So don't go around and delete these manually. Ain't nobody got time for that. We see them slide out and then slowly slide back in because they're just trying to return to their original positions. That looks great so far. And at 50%, let's have them slide to the center of the screen. I'll save this. And they're getting funky with some of that. So you can leave that in if you want. Just as I was saying before, we need to make sure we specify top of zero here as well. So it knows that it should only start moving the top down once it's done moving all the way out right. So I'll show this again. So now it's doing what we want it to do. It looks like they're a little bit too far right and down, so let's just change this to 40%. And we can do some math on this to get them actually in the center, but this is just for a meme website. So fudging the numbers is totally fine here. And then at the end, we want them all the way off screen. So 100%. There's the basics of our animation. In my final version, I also had them spinning around. And to do that, we can use the transform rotate property. Here we'll transform it and we'll rotate it. And then transform origin just says which part of the image we want to rotate around. Because you can rotate around any of the corners or the center. And we just want to rotate around the center. So like all these properties, we want to make sure they're included in all of the keyframes. So we want it to start out at zero degrees, then rotate to 360 degrees, and then go back to zero degrees. And there you have it. And if you want, and we want to make any adjustments to how long this takes, we can set it to 10 seconds here. I'll refresh this. And now it goes a lot slower. So create the kind of animation you want and then set the time to however long your audio track. So I think hours is like five or six seconds, maybe five and a half. And that's all the new CSS for this lesson. Let's quickly add in the background for the body. Let's also add a few properties just so everything's going to get aligned properly. And feel free to go to W3 schools if you don't understand any of these properties. In some of the previous lessons, I've gone over how to make your website look great on mobile. So let's add a media query for max width, and I think 500 pixels is just fine to assume that maybe someone's on a phone. For the body, I'd like to include a smaller image. When people are on their phone, you don't want to waste all their data, and this is a pretty big image. I pulled up a smaller version of that image, and we can just use that here instead. For Scarlet, let's just make her a little bit bigger when people are on mobile, because when you're this scrunched down, it's just a little too small. And now all the sizes are a lot better. And now that we're going to go into some of the new JavaScript for this lesson. Let's start by creating our script tag. And this is actually going to be pretty similar to our soundboard. What you can even do is just open this file and copy and paste the hard work in from here. You don't always have to reinvent the wheel when programming. There is so much code that's out there on the internet, on Stack Overflow, on GitHub. Also pull from your previous projects because that's code you hopefully understand. We're going to start by creating our audio variable. And here we can actually define it because we're not using lots of different audio files. Pat this is opulence.wave. And then the uncle can call it you own everything. And then here we'll make a new function called you own everything. And this is where we'll play our audio. Instead of having to pause it each time so we can do the spam clicking, we can just set the current time to be zero. If you want to know all the properties for the audio object, you can go to W3Schools has a list of all the properties and examples of how to use. Refresh and see if this is working. Upland, 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 upland. I'm going to comment out this line for now, just so we can have a bit of silence while we're working. Now we're going to use JavaScript to change what's happening on the page. There's so much interactivity you can do with JavaScript and HTML. The first thing you'll need to do is select an element on the page. And this is pretty similar to how we select to style things. Here we use body to style things in the body. Here we use dot scarlet to target elements with the scarlet class. And we can do the same with JavaScript. 
And I'm, I'm just copying this from W3 Schools because there's a lot of syntax to remember and I just want to be sure I get it right the first time without having to do much debugging. So I'm copying document.querySelector and then we'll in quotes we'll put body and then <laughs> right on the other tab I have how do you change CSS with JavaScript? You just do dot style and then whatever property. So let's set background equal to blue. I'll save that and refresh. Oh, why didn't it work? Oh, I didn't click on it. Is that red? I don't know. Lots of fun can be had with this. In my meme website, I have a list of images and I just rotate through them. Here, let's set background image. And instead of doing dashes like we have here, we're gonna just change this to be in camel case. And you'll have to use single quotes instead of double quotes just so the quotes don't interfere. And I'll save this and now when we click on it, it changes the image. I'm gonna throw in all the backgrounds down here. Now, this isn't anything too fancy. We know it's a list because we got the square brackets and we're just separating each item with a comma. And these are just the URLs I pulled from Google Images. Instead of typing in the URL manually, we can do our string multiplication. We have the first half of it, and then we'll throw in backgrounds. Maybe we can put in the fourth element, and then we, we add the closing parentheses here. I know it seems a little confusing, but use your IDE to help you with this. We see that the text is in yellow, and then all the variables are different colors. So use that to inform you to make sure you're doing the right thing. So I'll refresh this, and now it sets it to a new image. If we want to rotate through all of these images, we can create a new function called get background. And here we can return the value of the background. We want to start this number at zero and then increase it every time this is clicked. Create a variable outside of the function called background index. And then in here we'll set background index to background index plus one. This is going to increase it every time. And then instead of five, we just pass in background. And there's a short form for this, which is a lot easier. You can just do plus plus. Minus minus will also work if you want to go down. So let's refresh and see if it works. So now it's rotating through all of the images. But we need to be careful because there are only so many images and I know some of y'all watching this video clicked on this over 200 times. We have to make sure that it's gonna loop back to the original value. So we can use an if statement. If background index is greater than background length minus one. Because so we're starting at zero, so if there are 10 images in here, we try to get index 10, it's not gonna be there. And it's gonna be undefined, throw a bunch of errors, and we do not want that. Save this, and now it's going smoothly through all of the images. I also created a set of small backgrounds for people on mobile. Just like how we have it in our style file, we want to have small backgrounds available. We want to get the width of this window if it's less than 500 pixels. So JavaScript get window width. Window.inner width is what we'll use. So if this is less than 500, then we'll return small backgrounds at background. And I made sure that backgrounds and small backgrounds have the same amount of images. So you don't have to deal with extra math in there. And because we're returning here, we'll only return at this point if the window is greater than 500 pixels. And I can see that these images are of less quality, so I know that these are the smaller ones. This is the only part we needed to modify our website with JavaScript. Now we want to get back to the animation. We want to trigger the animation when we click. We'll do another document.query selector, and this time we'll do dot dancers. If we remove the animation name here, then it won't have the animation. But when we add it again or remove it in JavaScript, it gets triggered again. So dancers.style animation name. And remember, because we have the dash, we have to use this camel case instead, which is just capitalizing every word except for the first one. And that animation name was dancing. And now when we click on it, they come out. Lovely. When we click on it again, they are nowhere to be seen. And I mean, spoiler alert, I know Kahana got eliminated, but we want to eat her up every single time she's on this damn website. So when we click this again, we need to reset the animation. Let's first start by putting our dancing element into its own variable. That way we don't have to get it every time. And instead of setting the animation style to dance, we're going to set it to none. So this will set the animation style to none and then reset the dancing animation. But this doesn't work because everything inside of this function happens at the same time. We have removed the animation name, but we're also setting it, so it just thinks that it's still there. So we can wait one millisecond before triggering the animation again. So to do that, we do set timeout in parentheses, and then we'll pass it a function. This is a little complicated, but feel free to just copy and paste it. And then we create a function in here that sets the animation to dancing. And then after the comma, we'll write 10. 
and we'll set this to 10 milliseconds, which should give everything enough time to finish running. Now every time we click it, they pop on out, serving you opulence, mama. Now we can throw the playback in, and we finish the basics of this website. And it is serving you what? Uplands, you own everything. And back to camera one. We've done a ton in this video. But if you want to make your website more mobile friendly, deploy it to Firebase and then add Google Analytics for that. I've got separate videos for all of those. Link will be in the description below. And let me know if you have any questions with that. In the description, I'll also include all of the final code so you can see how I did all of those things for this project. Look forward to another Drag Race meme, hopefully this weekend. There is so much fun content we're able to play with and do these beginner projects. When I was first learning to code, I was told, oh, I should go build projects, and that's a much better way to learn. But I had no idea what kind of projects I'd want to build and how to make something fun. As I have shown you, with even just the basics, there's so many fun things you can do. So play along, build your own, make variations on this, that's all a great way to start learning. That's all for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment below if you have any questions, and share this with all of your friends. Because if we're going to take over the world, we're going to need a lot of people. Bye!